Hello ladies and gentlemen, men and women, boys and girls, welcome to the most must watch talk show in history, Baseway TV. Today's show is about one thing and one thing only, sex. Ah, sex? What is he talking about? Is he trying to be there on the show? No, no. Especially if it's an African person who's watching this show. You've just been dirty. Sex is a common word. You use it all the time. What sex is your child? Is it a boy or a girl? So, remember, it's just okay. It's a common word. What I meant to say is this. Today's show is about sexual transmissible diseases. It could be through blood or sex. Okay. Now, on my show, right straight away, on my show today, I've got two guests. One is Chris from Youth Group. How are you doing, Chris? I'm fine, you? Yeah. I'm fine, great. We've got Nathan. Nathan, how can we introduce you? Are you can we call you a sexual sex education advisor or health advisor? I think um, in my role, I tick all those boxes. But um, I'm called a community outreach and development coordinator. Okay. And I work with an organization called Waverly Care. So what do you do the most there? What do you do the most? Uh, what we do is to support people living with HIV, mm -hmm. and uh, we do support people also living with hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. you know. But uh, my role mainly is to support Africans who are living with HIV and to raise awareness in the African communities right. ar around HIV and how we prevent it. Right. I've got my friend, I brought my friend with me here today. He also wanted to be a part of the show today. My friend, his name is Teddy. Teddy, you also gonna have to sit here. Remember? Nice to meet you, Teddy. <laughs> meet him. Hi, Teddy. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Are you listening? Remember, it's not, a, it's not a PG show. You have to be careful or start falling asleep. Right? Since you start falling asleep already, that means you're not interested. Go. Right. I, I got to ask you a question, Chris. Uh, yeah. As young as you are, mm -hmm. when was the last time, right? I, I said it. Uh -huh. I said, if it's an African person is watching this show, yeah. just the way I introduced it, uh -huh. they'll be like, what is he going to talk about? Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, because it's like uh, to talk about sex in family yeah. or in African community, as soon as you mention yeah. that thing, it looks like a taboo. Yes, yes, definitely. Do you also conceive that perception as well? Yes, definitely. In community, uh, sex is a huge taboo. Um, and the main element of that is, is mainly religion. Religion plays a, a huge role in in bringing that taboo up uh, as it's mentioned in a lot of scriptures that you shouldn't have sex uh, before uh, before marriage and that plays a huge huge role in developing that taboo so i'm coming back to you nathan i need to ask you chris mm -hmm. when was the last time or maybe what was the first the first time that your parent really said chris sit down here remember you're growing up mm -hmm. Now, there's a time that you're going to be maybe sexual active. Definitely, but remember, yeah. one thing you have to know is to know mm -hmm. how to protect yourself. Do yeah. you remember? Can you remember? Can you recall your parents actually talking to you about sex education? Mm, no, I'm going to talk here in general. Uh, I think that um, our African parents mm -hmm. tend not to talk about that subject. Yeah. Yeah. And mainly it's because, as I said before, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. that taboo and the scriptures and that. Uh, religion we don't tend to talk about the uh, the subject which is very very is very uh, it's not good it's not good it's so not do you good. think um, is it helpful or is it's no it's not is it healthy or is not healthy it's not healthy at all uh, i believe that parents should be able to tell the kids uh, when uh, the danger of sex uh, transmitted d disease mm -hmm. before they become sexual active that would help. Uh, that would help them to avoid um, a lot of diseases as they grow up. Okay. And uh, I believe that uh, in this age that we live in, through internet and stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of kids should do their own sub, uh, especially African kids. Mm -hmm. If they do not get the talk from the parent, I think they should be able to do their own research. Well, no, here it's quite okay because you get education. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, they should do their own research and education as well from school. And I think that is the the education that we get here about sexual disease and uh, sexual health. It's quite helpful. Uh, it's quite helpful and something that we, um, our friend in Africa do not get that. Oh yeah. We we do not get that. Okay, nothing. Yeah. As we all African men, yeah. so so there's no taboo here. So yeah, we definitely. all know the reality. So nothing. You as a well, let me just call call you health advisor. Okay. 
That yes, probably suits you. Yeah, it checks the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. My question is this. When should I or should someone realize that it's time to get tested? I think um, s testing for uh, any sexually transmitted diseases, uh, including HIV, mm -hmm. should be really done twice a year. Twice a year. Remember, if you can't do it, then at least, at least do it once a year. Remember... Uh, because sometimes people say, like, I'm too young, I'm three years old, there's no need for me to have a set, uh, to, to, to do a test. Some people, they say, oh, I'm 43, I'm, I'm 43 years old, I cannot do it. And some say, some say, like, I'll do it when I'm about to die. So what, what, what stage should I, what, what, to what stage should I start thinking about uh, uh, doing a Because uh, there's a situation a of, um, of exposure, you know, if you... You, you, if you believe you've been exposed mm -hmm. to a, a, a situation that could really lead you in contact mm -hmm. with uh, with maybe Hep C or HIV, it's mm -hmm. always good to do a test. For example, if somebody for if if you were in a car accident, mm -hmm. it means that you know there might be blood that's spilled from another person that you don't know whom we don't know their status. Mm -hmm. So that's a simple thing to so really go ahead and go get tested. And um, the issue is also depending you could go you could go to a country whereby healthcare is not very regulated yeah. mm -hmm. and you go there you get a toothache you go to see a dentist yeah and you never know where lit whether literally they use the right equipment which is sterilized or not so if you have ex exposure in any way yeah. or through sexual contacts where you didn't use a condom most of the time it's really very good so to at get what tested age, at, what, at what age should you start thinking about uh, uh, doing the test because for example for example if uh, the good thing like in this country mm -hmm. scotland every woman who is pregnant mm -hmm. they are tested in antenatal you know okay. the reason that's why they are tested for hiv is to prevent mother to child transmission because mm -hmm. if they find a mother who is living with hiv mm -hmm. what they do is they put them on treatment and that prevents the mother from passing on hiv to their child mm -hmm. okay. but if somebody comes to this country so for example late you know mm -hmm. maybe they've come from africa and they're pregnant they're going to give birth in this country then it's good to really test even if it's a one day a one, a one day old baby to mm -hmm. test them to oh, be so certain the that, earlier uh, the better the earlier yeah, the better yeah, for yeah. any health yeah. condition the mm -hmm. earlier it's called mm -hmm. the better it means that you have better better outcomes mm -hmm. you know Definitely. for your treatment mm -hmm. if anything is called for a late bit a simple thing like malaria mm -hmm. we come from africa yeah. malaria is the biggest killer in africa because people don't get really tested they take mm -hmm. it for granted mm -hmm. because the cure is there but every, every disease is a question that we test early, mm -hmm. better outcomes. Chris, you've got something to add? Yeah. To add to, add to it? Yeah, to add to that, to what Nathan said, yeah. it's really, really crucial to get tested early mm -hmm. on. Because mm -hmm. uh, by testing early on, you are, uh, it gives you a better um, opportunity to avoid the, uh, no, to get treatment. Mm -hmm. It gives you an opportunity to get treated. treatment, mm -hmm. uh, to get treated. And, and that would cause, that would reduce the, the disease and stuff and okay. you have a normal life and yeah and, the, and you know exactly where you stand exactly you know, you know you exactly where you life. stand yeah. and you have a normal life after what, if you know your your disease earlier right okay get now you get tested probably you realize that you are hiv positive or for example you have another bloody transmit transmissive diseases so what do you go from there i think the the biggest challenge is uh dealing with uh with that, the positive result, you know, because mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Because it's not an easy thing for you, somebody, to tell you that you're living potential with a, a condition that potentially could kill you, you know. Because yeah. most people they've got they don't they've got the wrong information. Is they that what you call? Is that what you call positive result? No, uh, it's <laughs> uh, the positive result. Is for example, if you if you test you test positive, it means yeah. that you're living with HIV. Oh, right. okay. well, and yeah. if you test negative, uh -huh. it means that you don't have HIV. Yeah. But all those. Whatever your result, mm -hmm. their implications. Yeah. If you're negative, make sure that you stay negative throughout. Uh -huh. That by use of, of safe, sex, sex, safe sex materials like use of condom, mm -hmm. encouraging testing for your sexual partners, mm -hmm. reducing your sexual partners at mm -hmm. all, being, you know, be abstaining. And uh, in Africa, when I was growing up, they used to call it zero grazing. That's mm -hmm. meant that you know, sticking to one sexual partner mm -hmm. and being faithful to them. But uh, when it's a positive result, it doesn't necessarily mean, for example, in Scotland where we live, mm -hmm. treatment is very, very effective. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to die. The mm -hmm. main issue is to deal with, it, with that mental anguish that you might have. Because mm -hmm. people really, if they test, they really struggle to cope with that positive diagnosis. And that's why we come in as an organization. Because mm -hmm. we are there to support people through that journey. 
Okay. From the hospital, from diagnosis, mm -hmm. and we are in the community through the clinics, you can be signposted to us so and we support you to really yeah, signposted. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing, man. So maybe it's effortless. Let's take this, seize this opportunity, and then if you want to signpost someone, where would you signpost them? Yeah, for example, when, for example, if you get tested, you, yeah. your doctor, you could ask your doctor, well, is there, uh, there some HIV organization that could support me through my journey? So you, start, to from, from, uh, you start to the hospital. Yeah, you so start from the hospital, because the, cause the hospital, because yeah, if, if, if whatever you've been diagnosed from, mm -hmm. it's always good for them to give you some information of the community organization that would support you through your journey to deal with the positive, positive results. It's not a, it's, it's a very lonely place. So you need organizations like us to be with you in your journey as, as you cope. So if you've been di diagnosed and uh, you found out you you are probably HIV positive, mm -hmm. so the, the the first step is to to go to to the doctor and start searching for re uh, for treatment. You know, mm -hmm. it, it depends. You know, it's uh, initially it used to be that your CD4 count had to go to be very low. A CD4 count means that you know the white blood cells that fight your 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 your, your body defenses yeah, yeah, yeah. have gone so low. Mm -hmm. So, but now what uh, the recommendation is saying that whenever somebody tests for HIV, HIV tests HIV positive, mm -hmm. they should start treatment immediately. Yeah. That's what now. That's what uh, the, rec the the recommendations are these days. But initially, your your CD4 count had to be below 300. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, whoever post tests positive, mm -hmm. they're trying to really start them on treatment as fast as possible. Okay, now you start, you, you, you are tested, and then you realize that you are HIV positive. Now, the question is, how, how do you prevent from catching it? How do you prevent yourself from catching HIV or any transmissible diseases? Yeah, the main, the main part of it is to really put HIV on our own agenda, you know, whether... I'm a parent myself, mm -hmm. you know, I still really look at my children. I don't want them to really grow up and they still struggle with the same thing I struggled with as a mm -hmm. mom. So I feel if we all of, in communities, mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. teachers, in every, whether our, our religious leaders, everyone thinks that it's our responsibility to stop the spread of HIV. Mm -hmm we should really rise and open our doors mm -hmm. to a special organization like ours mm -hmm. to really come and talk to people about it. Because certain times as a parent, you might not really have the courage mm -hmm. to talk to your kids mm -hmm. about HIV. We are there, we can do that. But also the major part of it, a condom is a very simple thing, mm. but it's really, really very effective. It mm. prevents all, most of, the, of sexually transmitted diseases, mm -hmm. including HIV. Mm -hmm. you know. I know people would say it's not 100%, mm -hmm. but nothing is 100%. You mm -hmm. could walk from your house, but you, it's not 100% that you would go back. Mm -hmm. You could be knocked by a car. Mm -hmm. So there's always a percentage margin of error in mm -hmm. everything. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use a condom. They are very effective in preventing HIV. Mm -hmm. And for those who are living with, already diagnosed to be positive with HIV, if they you, they, they, they adhere to their treatment, that means that basically they are they're not inf they become non-infectious. Yeah, yeah. They don't transmit. Let me, let me but that should also be coupled. If yeah. you have somebody who is not living with HIV as their sexual partner, they should couple that with uh, with condom use. Okay. Do you know what this nothing? Because it's it's very far from me. <laughs> I should <laughs> test it. <laughs> very far from you. Yeah. Anyway, this is a stress ball. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If this show is stressing you out. Or maybe you are just like, maybe you're not feeling well, you are depressed or anything like that. Just take this ball, squeeze it harder, harder, nothing. You can test that. Try it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Try it. Squeeze that. Even when you're talking, you feel good because... I'm already feeling better. <laughs> you're feeling better already. <laughs> I'm already feeling better. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Chris. Yeah. As, not, as you mentioned... Mm hmm your parent, I, I don't mean your parent, I mean our parents, in yeah, because we are yeah, talking yeah. in a general about yeah, the yeah. African community. Our parents, they don't tell us, like, okay, when you reach at, 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 at the certain age, mm -hmm. you need to be careful. The best advice, ad, advice I ever get from my parents is to mm -hmm. tell me, like, no sex before marriage. Yeah. Of course, I would like to believe that, and then I would like to practice that as well. But uh, also, they need to, to provide an alternative. Yeah, like definitely. If 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 I'm not listening to that to the mm -hmm. advice, what is next? At least I've got the right. I, I have the right to protection. Mm -hmm. Tell me like all the dangers come with sex. Not just to tell me not to do it. Yeah, In fact, definitely. it makes me a little bit curious. Yeah, I definitely. want to find out why, why is my dad saying like. Yeah, why? Yeah, definitely. 
it's only sex only before marriage. Mm-hmm. And then when I go out, my friend, they're talking about and all kind of stuff. So I've got a comment on that. Mm. Yeah, as you said, why you, you, the advice that your parent gave you, that was... Yeah, b- yeah, they don't give you. They don't... Do you think... Wh- what's the reason why they don't uh, tell you? Uh, they don't tell you uh, about... Uh, the education that the danger that surrounds sex they tell you like don't have sex before marriage uh, the reason the the reason that they don't usually t- talk about sex uh, this is my opinion i believe it's through uh, is that too much respect or n- it's not too much respect as i mentioned before religion has a big important yeah. important role in that and uh, so because you are religious you can't talk about sex yeah that is one that is one element of it because of religion thing, uh, our parents tend to shy away from sex talk. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing is mainly, it's not something that is mainly talk in our community. And, and I think that is wrong. And I think our parents should have the, as Nathan mentioned before, mm-hmm. our parents should open up more and start talking to us about that. Yeah. And not just our parents, as our pastors. Yes. Yeah, they tend to shy away from the problem as well. I think no, they should. Pastor, pastor, will give a blame for that. If they start talking about sex, they'll be like, "What kind is it? Is, it, is this pastor pervert or something?" No, no, I don't think they'll they'll get the blame for it. If they tell the uh, the kids about the the um, the danger of like sex and uh, no, no, the danger of sex transmitted disease early on, mm-hmm. then that will prevent from from them uh, catching getting uh, catching a lot of diseases which I think is crucial. I think because in our community, mm. pastors have a huge uh, respect from our, our yeah, parents yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they have that role. If they tell the kids about this and this, mm. I think that would be huge in our community and that will prevent a lot of so, kid catching diseases okay. and stuff. Yeah. Nathan, today is 1st of December. What's the message you've got for us? <laughs> yeah, today is um, 1st of December uh-huh. and... Um, it's recognized as International World AIDS Day. Mm-hmm. And the reason as to why is to mark, to mark and sort of, sort of it's, it's to remind us mm-hmm. that uh, HIV is still there, but also to remember those who have lost their lives to, to AIDS. Because yeah. there's a difference between HIV and AIDS. Mm-hmm. AIDS HIV is, a, is the virus. Yeah, Somebody can live with it without mm-hmm. it for being AIDS. AIDS but AIDS, actually, actually uh, sickness, uh, it's AIDS, actually AIDS, AIDS, it means those are the opportunistic Im- infections that people yeah. get that could lead to death. Mm. Mm. So by really celebrating International World AIDS Day, it's say that science has really done a, a great job. Mm. Treatment is very effective. You know, but which people are still dying out there because mm. of um, the fear of being stigmatized. Mm. So do you think... HIV now can be healed? No, it, it can be treated. It's, be it's treated, like, no, like, no, like. No, completely finished. It, it can be treated. Treatment is very effective, mm-hmm. but it is no cure. Because yeah. it can be treated, it's mm-hmm. like any long term illness, but there's no cure. But if somebody's living is test HIV positive, mm-hmm. they can live a normal life as yeah. long as they get tested early, mm-hmm. early enough. Wait, wait. This advice I need to, to, give, to give my friend, first of all. Listen, I know they don't listen, but you are listening. Remember, the best advice that I can give him is that not to have sex at all. Is that a good advice? That's very impractical, because uh, <laughs> I still believe that, you know, every human being has got a right to conjugal rights. <laughs> For example, so you, he, you, you have a right to have sex. I, even a parent has no right to stop their, ch- their, their children to have, as long as they are, they are, they are, they are, they are 18. If so it's in African countries, have a right and have 16 sex. in this country where we live, mm-hmm. you can't tell your child that you can't have sex. It's, mm-hmm. it's against their right. They, they have a right to their bodies to do whatever they want to do for as long as... It depends on what age as well. Yeah, yeah because the, the, age of sexual, age as well. the, the age of sexual consent in this country is 16. So a 16-year-old has got a right to have sex. No, in my African community, it's uh, 20. No, 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 it's 18. 18. It, 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 it's 18. 18. <laughs> and it means that you, you just have to really show them the right way to keep them within the parameters of safety. So Talk my, to them. My, my Teddy, just be careful then. Just be careful. Just be careful, okay? Just be careful. <laughs> okay. right. Teddy will be careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as, as a community, yeah? What do you think is our role in terms of um, stopping the spread of uh, HIV diseases? 
You know, as a because they've already said that you know disease, you know infectious diseases yeah. really spread through social networks. Mm. You know, because if I'm living alone mm. and I'm isolated, marooned on an, an island, yeah. basically I'm not going to transmit anything mm. to anyone because I'm alone. Yeah. But through the social networks we meet in, either we're going to be mm. at churches, yeah. I might meet a sexual partner there, or it's country associations we go to celebrate. Yeah. We're most likely to, to 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 really get get sexual partners there. Yeah. So and and uh, HIV being signed of uh, an infectious disease, mm -hmm. in that, that's how it's transmitted. And even travel. We travel so much. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to be in Uganda, where I come from, mm -hmm. I just get onto a plane and today I'll be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, yes, the isolated communities that are still living in the, in the middle of the bushes that are and don't interact with other people, mm. they don't get these diseases. Mm. So it's basically through the social networks that we transmit these diseases, and that's the community, through our communities. And it's through the same means mm -hmm. that we have to stop the spread of HIV, by communities opening up, yeah. by, communities real, yeah, yes. by communities realizing mm -hmm. that we've got this, it's an issue. Yeah. HIV AIDS has killed more people than the wars we're looking at, yeah. you know. So we shouldn't really take it for granted because treatment has gone better. Yeah. It's a question of us opening up every opportunity we have, whether we are at a Christmas party, you know, and there are adults and children there, Let's talk about HIV. Let's so talk about stopping. Let it. me say. Let's I'll, 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 I'll go to Chris. Chris, mm -hmm. do you think like the way they say, like the way we all come from Africa, Definitely, yeah. and uh, most of the time we, I get this impression that mm -hmm. the large number of HIV uh, people are in Africa. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. So, so what you think is the cause of that? Is that because of the the awareness is less there, or or maybe just people that being ignorant? Yeah, what you say there is right. Um, Africa contributes to the 68% 60, of the world HIV, oh which is a really, really large number. And the main reason of that um, mainly is because uh, we don't have the... What would I put this? Uh, we don't have the... Um, the education? Yeah, we don't have the education. Education is one thing. Yeah. Sexual education, we don't have that. And... Uh, our parents don't tend to open up and, and what they've learned yeah. and try to teach us. So do you think is that because they don't know much about it? Or yeah. nothing you can add to this. Do yeah. you think it's because they don't know much about it? That's why they don't teach us? Or it's just because they no. just too res too much, too much respect. They're so reserved, so they're kind of a little bit shy from talking about it. Um, you know, you know the, the reason as to why the numbers in Africa, people in Africa living with HIV are really massive. It's not a single valuable explanation. There are so many valuables as to why so many people in Africa are living with HIV. Mm -hmm. Poverty is a very massive driver. You know. mm -hmm. For example, we're looking at um, a girl child in Africa. They are yeah. very vulnerable. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. And um, if they, they are coming from a v very poor family, a rich man could really have thousands of them. You know. mm -hmm. And if this rich man is living with HIV and not using condom, mm -hmm. it's going to be passed on. We're looking at Sub-Saharan Africa. It has mm -hmm. had its own crises of war. War, we, in war, women are raped, you know. Mm -hmm. For example, now we have a crisis with uh, Boko Haram in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I remember there's a time when they kidnapped 200 young girls from a school. Is that 300? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, most of these girls, but e even if they're going to be rescued, mm -hmm. they'll be raped. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And they're going to come back in the community with this car. Mm -hmm. But the, old, m m the only challenge is that if they come out and they tell somebody I'm living with HIV, mm -hmm. the community is going to judge them. Mm -hmm. you know? which is a challenge. Mm. It's not, it's, they didn't decide to go pick up that HIV. Somebody f kidnapped them. Mm. And uh, in the process, they've, um, they could come up when they have HIV. We, sh we should have be supportive. Mm. How do we give them to live a no life as normal as possible? Mm. How do we take away the stigma in communities? Mm. How do you, as community member, me, if I, I put my heart on as a community member, mm -hmm. and look at it, what's my role in making sure that if I know somebody's living with HIV, they are mm. not judged. They are still see themselves as them. They don't look at it. They don't. They are not HIV. Yeah. If you're living with malaria, you're not called call malaria. Yeah. But mm -hmm. why should do somebody living with HIV be called? Oh, they are living with HIV. Avoid them. And just because, well, I was I was doing an interview with one of your maybe your colleague or maybe someone you work with, label. She was saying to me like HIV is no longer a death sentence. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by Definitely. that phrase? Because remember when uh, HIV first came to the fore in the 1980s, uh -huh. um, when somebody was diagnosed, they took a few years, they developed full-blown AIDS, and they died. 
because there, there was limited treatment. Mm -hmm. Even the treatment that was there was really not effective at all. So but, it's but because of the treatment the, now, you the can... Tre the combination therapy that we have now basically is very effective. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. thing is, it's because it does not finish it to the ground, to the zero, to the zero ground. That's a problem. But we are looking at uh, things like diabetes. People live with diabetes for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And uh, for as long as you manage it, HIV has reached a level of being a manageable condition. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just yeah. a matter of like, hey, I'm HIV positive now. I have to accept it. Now it's me now to follow the instructions so that I can just live like everybody else then. Yeah, yeah for definitely, example. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For as long as you basically deal out because there's also stigma that you can get from the outside the outsiders the yeah. community mm. from your parents but there's also what they call self-stigma yeah because mm. most of the time the hardest thing to deal with if you don't never accept yourself you just nail that because yeah. i was going to say about uh, maybe chris you're going to go into this yeah yeah <laughs> i think i'm putting you on the spot like no, it's okay yeah um i mean when you are affected mm-hmm you're HIV positive or maybe with uh, another sickness could be anything but yeah. you know that it doesn't just go away you mm -hmm. know it's there if, un until you die mm -hmm. so the thing is how do you recover from that stigma how do you how do you recover that from that mental illness of thinking about oh uh, I, I don't have any future my life chances is less now I'm just gonna die uh, one of the main thing you could do is just uh, gain help how do you get help? Reach out to your closest family member. So how do you reach? Do you tell them like, look, I'm HIV positive now or what? Yeah, yes, you just have to open up to them. But it's not really, they don't really have to know mm. what you have. But if it's somebody close to you, like your, your partner, uh, you really have to open up to them and they'll help you. Or if that is not the case, you can go to your... Well, your sometimes there's a, there's this fear nothing. Like you feel like... If I tell maybe my partner, maybe she's just going to go away and uh, run, run me down saying like, oh, look at him. He's just going to die tomorrow because he's, he's now HIV positive. There's no hope for him. So you kind of a little bit feel that way and you reserve yourself. You kind of say, I'll just keep this to myself. But it's, it's a bit dangerous as well, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, there's too much misinformation out there. Yeah, and, you know, much yeah. as there's been for the past three decades, yeah. Uh, the HIV has been talked about, yeah. but people still have got the wrong perception. The issue is, um, if you open up, certain times it might be hard to open up to a, to a partner, but if you have a health professional with yeah. you, mm -hmm. us as an organization, we have care, we are there to support you through your journey, to help you really take it step by step till you discuss it with your partner. And we show them that really HIV has changed. It's not the HIV of the 1980s. Mm -hmm. it's, even if your partner is not, uh, is not HIV positive, you can still stay together. You will really they get onto treatment, you use condoms, you'll be safe between you, ha even, even you, you, when you're having sex, you'll still be safe as long as you protect yourself, you adhere to your treatment, you use your condoms. There's one thing because of the time, Yes. there's one thing I'm going to mention. I'm not going to sit here and pretend because we know that this stuff that's going on in society and communities mm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm. I mean, now we're talking about transmissible diseases between humans. Now, there's now animals, because earlier you were saying about using a condom as a way of protecting yourself to prevent uh, the spread of, um, to, to prevent you from, contaminate, from getting contaminated by uh, HIV. So now, there's now a human now, they're sleeping with animals, snakes and all that. What kind of advice would you give them? Because they still want to have pleasure with animals. Do you think they should use condom as well? Or you know, maybe take some medication? You know, I'm one of, um, quietly, an, um, a, a, an animal rights activist. Yes. It's one thing I wouldn't advocate for someone to have sex with an animal. Because an animal doesn't definitely. give you consent. Yep. Sex with a human being, yeah. for as long as they, are, they consent to it. Mm -hmm. Even your wife if she doesn't consent to sex you don't pr that will be rape yeah yeah so if you having sex with an animal basically is is against its rights as an animal so they i train, would like, don't, so, don't so there's you, no way you can train them you can so train dogs. much i know there's there always been a theory behind hiv in itself yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought, brought yeah. up that question mm. there's been a theory behind saying that uh, hiv jumped species yeah. from mm. monkeys to human to beings human, yeah. 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 so the question is i don't have the answer for that i don't know whether a man a man had sex with an animal mm -hmm. with a with a monkey we don't know how that happened or he was just bitten by a monkey but the issue is 
I wouldn't really be thinking that somebody rare should to be see having that sex with an animal. Going around and biting human. <laughs> uh, mm, I would yeah. kill a monkey with my punch. <laughs> so that's why we should see animals mm. have got their own rights. So they definitely, shouldn't be yeah. degraded to that extent. No one should be having sex with animals. Yeah, so definitely. Is that definitely. what you're going to tell them? That's what I think. Yeah. Because they, uh, they don't consent. They'll They're tell not you they to go away. <laughs> They'll tell you to go away. I, I believe. I think there's animal abuse. I don't think that should be able to happen. Yeah. Any one of the right mind, uh, I don't think they should be able to do such a thing, such a degrading thing <laughs> like that. I it's think a shame, that it's a shame. I don't think that should happen. Yeah. Should. So I mean, we are reaching towards uh, the end of this show, Nathan, because of the time. But I believe this is not the last time we're gonna do this again. If uh, all the means allowed us to do it again but uh, what's the last message you've got for the people watching this show today i think the last message i've got for the people watching the show today is that international world it stays still very relevant mm. but we we shouldn't be waiting for the first of december to think about hiv and aids mm. i think world it they should be every single day because mm. sexual transmissions happen every single day or mm -hmm. either contaminated medical equipment mm -hmm. in, 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 in places where they don't, in, in the NHS, mm -hmm. in the UK, it no longer happens. But it's, it's still being, people, health care transmissions are still happening around the world. So the issue is we should be vigilant to deal with one thing, stigma. Because stigma stops people from testing for HIV. Yeah. 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 Mm. So basically, yeah. challenge stigma. If somebody comes and tells you, oh, I, I know that person, they are living with HIV, yeah. it's none of their business. Mm. Do they know their own status? No. If th Whatever the situation is, if, uh, uh, HIV is not, doesn't become that person's name. Yeah. It's just a condition that is manageable. Everyone should be vigilant to get get tested twice a year every six months okay. at least once a year mm -hmm. at latest at, at late you know. thank you very much nathan chris i'm gonna maybe close with you yeah so you as young as you are you want to be role model to as a sinner yeah in definitely. terms of uh, sex education mm -hmm. so what are you going to tell them yeah uh, one main thing i would tell to anybody mm. uh depending on what age you are is just can test get tested mm -hmm. every time uh, do not use do not share needles with mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, tell you tell the truth to your sexual partner. Mm -hmm. uh, tell your sexual partner to get tested as well before. Um, you, you're not married, are you? I'm not married, yeah. but <laughs> I, 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 just saying, you know, <laughs> I'm reaching to to a <laughs> yeah. demographic of a lot of people, not just uh, young. No, no. I, I was gonna say that yeah. like you are growing up. You think like when uh, you see a beautiful girl walking about. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna say, okay, before I get married to you, we're gonna just have go first of all to the hospital and test, and then and then we get into this uh, serious stuff. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I believe that <laughs> that should be one of the, that should be one of <laughs> the crucial points. That. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that should be a crucial point. I think um, you should before engaging into like sexual thing. I think you should get your partner tested before. Yeah, 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 yeah just to avoid that. So you. You're gonna do that as well. Yeah, yeah. When, when you definitely, get, when definitely. When you feel like you wanna get married, yeah, you, you see someone like you wanna be with them forever. And, and, and I add on that for what Chris is saying because yeah. he's a he's, he's a young man. Um, if, if if your sex sexual partner is not ready to go get tested, yeah. use a condom first. Yeah. As you get to know each other. Yeah, definitely. And eventually, yeah, yeah. no sex you, before marriage. Then you go ahead. No and, sex uh, before marriage. No sex before marriage. <laughs> but uh, myself, where I come from, I know that realistically sexual transmission diseases are out there and the parents or the guardians can never be the sex police to stop people will do what they want to do yeah. so you rather they rather do it in a safe way yeah, than yeah, regret definitely, definitely. later and say you know you stopped me but i remember my parents didn't want me to have sex before marriage but i had sex before marriage yeah and uh, it's not yeah, something that i'm, that not something that I'm proud about <laughs> but uh, they couldn't stop me because mm. They couldn't be with me 24-7. Yeah. Mm. But I prefer as a parent to really be upfront with the children, discuss sexual health. Sexual health should be part of, uh, part of the family conversation. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. It shouldn't be something to be embarrassed of. Yeah, yeah. Each and every one of us, we are part of a result of se uh, a sexual encounter. Yes. So why should we be embarrassed of our own existence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know yeah. testing is a major thing. Yeah. You can test out your GPs, mm -hmm. their sexual... Sexual health clinics around Lanarkshire. Yeah. There are free condoms around Lanarkshire that you can pick up by, and discreetly. And these things should be used. The service is there. No one should be really getting 
into a sexual transmitted disease in this age and era where we have free treatment, free equipment, yeah. free sexual health materials. Let's make good use of them. Thank you very much, Nathan. Thank you very much, Chris, for coming. Thank you. And we'll see you again next time. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And remember, don't forget to subscribe to, the, to our YouTube channel to get more of this. Remember, we've got a friend, Teddy, is gone because he was falling asleep on a show for some reason. Maybe he just felt like it was a, an, uh, an adult show, a PG show, but to me, it was just an educational show, you know, just get some education about sex because you may end up doing some wrong stuff because you didn't, didn't have the knowledge about that. Sometimes, you, you, know, you know, you just do some silly stuff and then you regret it in, for the rest of your life, you know. So just subscribe it. Subscribe here. So that we can get more from Baseway TV. Our contact number is right here. And then please subscribe. That's our last message to you. Please subscribe. We've got be, be, because we've got a new movie coming out. It's a HIV movie. It's a really, really good one. It's a really, really good one. But if you subscribe, you're gonna be the first one to watch it. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Bye bye.